Come on, it's a speed round now. Yes. Uh, so you never met another person from another high school like, oh my God, you're the lion, I'm the ram. You never met another mascot? No, but now that you say that, I wish I had. It seems like you should go to a ball game and meet like Mr. Matt or like, you know, the San Diego chicken. You know what? And that's your conversation starter. I'm lying because we did have to go to summer camp to learn how to do our mascot <laughs> dances and there were other mascots there. What the only dances I know are oh my god, big hands in the air, oh my god, and I can't hear you <laughs> with the crowd or hands on the hips like are you gonna take all day referee? I don't think you understand really what goes into it. We just make it look easy because we're professionals. You're a professional Jen that's what it says on your eight by ten. Jen Murphy professional mascot. Yeah. If you were going to be the mascot for any team now, what team do you think you'd be the best mascot for? Oh, hmm. Or I guess a better way would be if you don't know sports teams, just pick an animal you feel like you'd be best. You would best embody. Okay, probably a tiger. A tiger? Yeah. I don't think tigers are afraid of being crushed out <laughs> in the wild. They kind of do the crushing. They lope around in the woods. And they just find shit to crush. They break hearts uh, of gazelles by murdering their little ones. They murder gazelles. And the gazelles, then they have heartbreak. You're more of a gazelle. Yeah, well, I can change that probably. A gazelle jumps beautifully. And then right when it's almost done jumping, goes, what the fuck? Did that even work? And then it just goes away going, well, good thing I didn't meet the lion. He probably would have killed me anyway. <laughs> Is that fair to say? Yeah. Probably after tonight, I'll become a lion instead of a gazelle. I like that. El, you, El Cholo, you were waiting for that? Yes. Was there a lot of Mexicans in the kitchen? There was a lot. I always got sexually harassed. I got written up for sexual harassment, though. At El Cholo? Yes. How? <laughs> because they don't ever get... They're really quiet and sly about it. And then I said it. What? Like they're in Latina the, men? In the kitchen, they're really... Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> hey, mommy, que pasa? La reza? <laughs> They just whisper all their shit really quiet, but I said it really loud in the middle of a dining room, so I got in big trouble. What did you, what did you harass? Besame like, culo. I said, kiss my ass in Spanish. That's not sexual harassment. That's like, kiss my ass. Well, it's got written up. Like, uh, the, if the patrons heard me, then they would be offended. What if you were walking a burrow through, so it was a literal, kiss my ass. When you get a chance, come on over here and kiss the ass that I walked in here with. I'm then ho- it would probably be um, encouraged. You ever been to the Grand Canyon? No. You ever been skydiving? No. You ever driven a motorcycle? Yes. Were you on the back or the front? Back. Was it a boyfriend that had the motorcycle? No. <laughs> Who had the motorcycle? My uncle. <laughs> Not the lesbian? No. <laughs> Have you seen the lesbian since that happened on Ecstasy? No. Or was she a lesbian? Uh, yeah, I guess so. What do you mean you get? These are your friends. They're not my friends. You just did Ecstasy with people and you don't know if, who they were? Nope. How do you wind up in a different state doing ecstasy doing with strangers? Doing stand-up and talking to people after the show. And they're like, hey, let's do ecstasy it's and bump donuts. It's just one of those things that happens one night. <laughs> <laughs> All the stars align. You ever do ecstasy, Angie? No. It's Matt. good. <laughs> Matt, he's like, no, I never did one ecstasy. I've done, you know, like sleeves of uh, Girl Scout cookies? I've done them like that. Brrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
fighting back. So you got written up. Yeah. I have a file. And waitress was the only... I can never go back. I can never go back to any Mexican restaurant. You can't go to like El Torito just for shits and giggles. They'll be like, there she is. They all talk. The girl that told me to kiss her ass. They all talk to each other on the bus (laughs) after work. Uh, Where else did you work? gets around. I'm a nanny. Are you really? Two days a week. Are the kids cool or do they suck? One-year-old. No, he's great. The happiest time of my life. Really? I can connect to a one-year-old very well. Of course you we can. We make intense eye contact. It's really good. Yeah, they don't really focus real well. So you <laughs> can make believe he's looking <laughs> at you. They don't talk. <laughs> he's just kind of looking a little bit past you and you're like, yeah. <laughs> and then you just take a step back. So he's looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, they're perfect. They are perfect. And they're taking the entire world in. And let me tell you something. That one-year-old, if you have a cool nanny... It's their first best friend. That's mm-hmm. that kid. What's, can you say his name? You can say Charlie. Name. Char- you're Charlie's first best friend. Yeah, that's how I feel. It and But it, it is how you should feel anyway because it's true. Yeah. Like that's a huge thing. Plus it's a constant reminder when you're with a child. Like uh, all, all, any bullshit that I have going on is not there when I'm with him. It's a constant reminder of what? Well, because they're so fresh and young that there's no, there's no bullshit. So why don't you nanny more than twice a week? Mm, That's all they need me for. Maybe you should say, you know, you guys should go out and do ecstasy. (laughs) Maybe you'll meet people from another state to, you know. I nanny up in the Palisades. It's very lonely, though. Where in the Palisades? There's nothing up there. You're just up on a hill. I live in the Palisades. It's gorgeous. Party all goddamn day. I'm in the Highlands. Ooh, yeah, the Highlands is weird. It is way up and way in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, I like burn those... so much gas driving up there. That's the biggest complaint about You're the like, Palisades. Ah. Is gas mileage. People that live there are furious. <laughs> like, I want to live in the Palisades. It's beautiful, and I can see the ocean from the top of my house. I almost did Stephen Wright. That was so funny. I want to live in the Palisades. You're but hilarious. The gas mileage is murder. Why did you murder? <laughs> Do you do any impressions? No. No? I wish I did. I love watching you do impressions. They're amazing. Me? Which ones do you like? Um, I loved all of them that you did. Stephen Christopher Wright's Walken. the new one. Your Adam Sandler was good. I'd never seen you do Adam Sandler before. I got to go. That one was great. You just have to act like a kid that Norm you Norm MacDonald. If you act like Charlie, the one-year-old you nanny for, <laughs> you're essentially doing Adam Sandler. I got to go. Yeah, but you can switch into any voice so fast. Mm, it's a very specific voice. Does I can't... that just start when you're a child? Yeah. I remember I saw Stripes when I was eight. My parents couldn't find a sitter, so they took me to see Stripes. And I'm eight years old between my parents watching ladies wash their tits in the shower. And then John Lennon cats wash those muscles. And I was like, I got to get into the army. This is amazing. And I remember when I came home, I acted. All the kids were older than me on my street. I was the youngest by two years. By f- the next kid was two years older than me. And I remember in this kid's garage, I acted out stripes. For, like, you got, like, you don't understand. There's something so much bigger than us out there. There's this thing called movies and funny things happen. Girls wash their boobs and you can spy on them. If you just <laughs> join the army, you can meet Bill Murray and John Candy and have a ball. So I did impressions of everybody, you know, in stripes, I remember. That was Pretty probably amazing. my first impression at eight. Wow. And that's when I knew that there was really no reason for me to be in school. (laughs) Nothing was applicable to what I was doing in my everyday life. Hey, these guys really like when I goof off. This algebra is for the birds. Do you have any pets? Yeah, I have a dog. What kind of dog do you have? Shih Tzu. Oh, Maddie Boy loves Shih Tzus with the smashed in face. You want her? She needs a home. What? She what? Well, she just needs a like some time home, like temporary, because I'm gone a lot. Like when I nanny, it's 12 hours during the day, and then if I go do a show... She's like 18 hours. She's alone. Marathon running. You can't even be intimate with your dog. I love my dog. Why don't you tie the dog up at the halfway point of your marathon training <laughs> and then untie the dog, let her run with you. She's a shih tzu. She'll start, <laughs> she'll let you know when she's tired. <laughs> she'll die. <laughs> and then you tie her back up and do like more of a sprint eight training, some anaerobic burst. She uh, needs a nice guy like Maddie who will love her. I think you were just talking about Jen Murphy. <laughs> no. So you, I don't run marathons anymore. I stopped. I just run for fun. 
That's the strangest sentence I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> I was on the beach and I saw those young lifeguards. They're like 12, 13 year old kids on Will Rogers Beach. And they swim past the buoy, come back. And then when they got out of the ocean, they had to run up the beach to the lifeguard stand and like do some shit with a oh, canoe. Shit. These kids came out of the ocean laughing. These idiots didn't even know that it sucks. They had to swim. All, it's, it's like 50 yards with, and it's the Pacific Ocean. And they just come out of the, like, I'm jogging in a straight line going, this sucks, this sucks, this You don't sucks. enjoy it at all? I, like you said, I like it when I'm done, but I don't, I can't go more than like 3.3 miles without realizing this is terrible for my body. Oh, see, I'd much I rather it. do sprint training. Oh, that's probably better for you anyway. Uh, so you're going to be in Irvine. April 16th. April 16th. I am going, when does this go up? I'm going, I'm in Vegas right now, you assholes. Come see me at the South Point Casino. And if you're getting this late, like Saturday, I'm still here. <laughs> Maybe you're like, oh, I just got to, Ve I listened to this Sunday going to Vegas. I'm still here, asshole. Come see me at the South Point Casino in Las Vegas. Or don't. You're a grown up, but do me a favor. If you meet Jen Murphy and you go to one of her stand-up shows, and if you're a nice guy that doesn't need to show affection and you're not going to hurt anybody's feelings, who's the guy for you? If you don't, if you don't want the intimacy, how, are you going to live no, your? No, I do want intimacy. But you're afraid to let anybody in. Are you going to be an well, old maid? Well, they just have to be nice people. But you just said you're afraid to. Could happen. I'm, I haven't given up hope. There's always hope. It's got to be somebody outside of L.A. though. Well, you're kind of in the wrong town then. Well, no, I could have, you know, a long distance relationship. That would be good for you because there's no intimacy. That's my that, point. Uh, you can have intimacy. On a guy, what, on a, on a uh, computer? LOL, TTYL. No, no, I don't talk on computers. I mean, like, just like two hours away. That's still a good drive. It's not that far. It's a good drive on the way there. Sad drive on the way home. You break no. your own. You break your own heart every time you turn around to come back. No, because you're just reliving in your head how great it was. Jen, don't you see? No. In your dream scenario, <laughs> you're setting yourself up for disappointment. You got to let Jen Murphy free. Unlock the goddamn cage that you're afraid. It's a cage of fear. You're afraid. That you do. Sounds horrible. You do. It is horrible <laughs> for you because you're great. You do a whole set of stand up comedy and it's great. And there's one sentence of it you're like, I don't know if that worked. And then you said you had like a panic attack on stage about the, instead of going, this all went great. I'm not sure about that one line. Fuck it. That was great. You don't want to have a boyfriend because you're afraid of getting your heart broken. Maybe if I had a boyfriend that lived two hours away, then I would have my heart broken because he's out of town. But then when you drive home, you no longer have intimacy. You're leaving. You drive home. At your, each scenario, you like operate. It's like when a woman has a boyfriend that's an asshole, and the next boyfriend's an asshole, and the next boyfriend's an asshole. She likes guys that are assholes. You somehow like this. <laughs> each scenario you set up is a scenario where you can enjoy loneliness and operate from that part. You just offered to give your fucking dog away. And why? Because then you would miss your dog and that, <laughs> then you could tell somebody, life is so lonely. My dog is at Maddie's house. I love my dog, but I don't see her anymore. Well, it's just easier to have a constant loneliness than a terrible crushing pain that makes you want to die. <laughs> <laughs> the love of your life is one. What? Charlie. <laughs> Charlie. Oh, Charlie. I didn't know that you the meant... The person like, you're most intimate with... Oh, yeah, yeah. He's my favorite. Is a baby. Yeah, yeah. Because that... He's not going to hurt me. Not yet. But what if he's four and goes, I don't want to go with her. I want to go with you. And you're going to be like, whoa, what the fuck was that? I changed a lot of diapers here, Charlie. Help me out. You got to get out there, Jen. Take the chains off. Be free. Fly. Listen <laughs> to Blackbird by Paul. Put Paul McCartney on. Listen to Blackbird. All right. In the dead of night, sing. You got to lighten up, Jen Murphy. You're too cool to be this afraid to accept love and and be, you know. Well, I think you have to just change your whole chemistry. 
You're going to do that. You can't change your chemistry unless you go to a chemist who can prescribe 